All right, so hello everyone and welcome to part five of my informal live stream series where I'm updating a blog's design. Um, and so for those who um, are watching this as the first part in these series, um, do go back and check parts one to four. What I've been doing is um, I have a live site, thesuns.blog, which um, I'll share the link in the Zoom chat again. Um, and this site runs the 2022 theme. And so what I've done is I've downloaded the site to a local um, WordPress installation on my computer, and I've updated the theme to 2023. Um, now the 2022 theme and the 2023 theme look different. Uh, so what I've done is I've updated the theme and then I've been modifying the 2022, uh, 2023 theme theme files um, so that the site looks very similar to this. And so last time, this is the original site. Last time, um, this is what we ended up with. So you'll see in the address bar, it says local host. This is the site on my local computer. Um, and this runs the 2023 theme. Hello, Lisa, welcome. Um, and last time I got it pretty close. So this is the original site. Um, and this is the new site. So I made a few adjustments um, just regarding design and the footer. I like the new footer much better. So let me pull out the old footer. Yeah, the bottom of the site was a bit, I don't know, there was too much information there. So I've managed to sort of squish that a bit and um, make it nice and tidy. Now, last time um, we were going to take this local site and put it back on the server. So what we did was we used the um, create block theme plugin. Um, so let me pull that up, WordPress, create block theme. <clears throat> so I'll drop this link in the Zoom chat. Um, so we were using this plugin and what I was doing was I exported, let's see. So this is my local site. I exported, the edited 2023 theme um, as a child theme of the 2023 theme. Um, so the create block theme lets you export um, themes from your site. Um, so I exported the child theme. I then went over to my live site, uploaded the child theme. And when I activated the child theme, the site threw a critical error and broke down. Um, and that's where we left off last time. So as you can see, the site, my live site is back up and running. So I was able to figure out what went wrong. Um, and today I want to um, reproduce that with everyone. So this session, I'm going to upload that buggy child theme once more. I'm going to break my site on purpose. And then I'm going to show you how I figured out what the problem was and how I fixed that last time. Um, so, any questions about all that before we jump into this? <clears throat> no, I mean, you explained it really well. Um, I have a, is it, is it better to have your, like a blog separate from, like if you have your, uh, a website for your business or can you have your blog be part of your website? Uh, I recommend having a blog as part of your website. Um, okay. So, the reason being, um, the, the biggest reason for me is um, SEO, so search engine optimization. Okay. And search engines like sites that produce new content regularly. So if you have a business, I think a lot of businesses, the site content doesn't change that frequently. Um, right. So um, in, in that sense, search engines look at your site and if it starts, if it feels like it's getting outdated, it sort of ranks you lower. Um, so a blog is actually a great way to always have fresh content on your site and sort of give you a, an edge above com, com, um, competition in search engine results. Um, so yeah, my, my recommendation is to have a blog in your company site rather than a separate site. Good, because that's that's what I did and I just did it recently. So I'm up to three blog, blog posts. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Um, when I say blog regularly, I don't mean every day. I think search engines. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Because I started this uh, a couple months ago. So 
okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I think so. If, if I if I understand correctly, search engines like consistency. So even if it's once a month, month if yeah. you post once a month for twelve months, that's better than posting say twelve days in a row and then not posting at all for a whole year. Um, yeah. So as long as you stay consistent, yeah, that's great. Okay. Great. Great. Thank Do you. the blogs yeah. have to be on the front page to, for the um, CEO? No, no, SEO, no not necessarily. <laughs> um, okay. SEO, yeah. <laughs> um, SEO. <laughs> as long as they show up in your site map, um, search engines will be able to find them um, and they can see there's new content going up. Now, okay. yeah, if they show up on your front page, it helps people find the blog posts. Um, so there's benefits in putting them on the front page. But for SEO purposes specifically, there's no need for them to have to be on the front page. All right. So let's dive into this. Lisa, I know you came in a bit later. Were there any questions you wanted to ask before we dive into this? You're all good. That's fine. No pressure. All right. So let's see. So last time what we did, um, oh, good, thanks. Yep, thank you. All right, so at the moment, I'm looking at my local site dashboard and each part in these series, I've said, if there's an update um, regarding the core software or the theme or the plugin, let's make sure we update it first. Um, but you'll notice here, the update on my site this time is for the create block theme plugin. So to give you an overview of what actually happened last time, um, when I uploaded the child thing to my site and activated that, I actually did nothing wrong. There was a bug in the create block theme plugin, um, which, so the, there was a bug in the plugin, which introduced a bug into my child theme. And that's why my site died. Um, and so I was able to identify the bug and I notified the create block theme development team and they patched the plugin. And so the update you're seeing here is because I filed a bug and they, and they patched the plugin. So um, I, I was a bit happy because in a small way, I was able to identify a bug and I was able to contribute to WordPress. Um, I didn't actually fix the bug. Like I'm not a developer, so I can't fix the plugin itself. Um, but I was able to collect enough information to let them know. And so they've now updated the plugin. So hopefully today, if we go through the same process, it shouldn't happen. Um, but so I, I do want to show how I figured out what was wrong. And to do that, I saved the buggy child theme on my computer from last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload that to my live site and I'm going to break my live site and then um, show you how I fixed that. <clears throat> so let's see, let's come to appearance themes. Um, uh, so this, so um, just to refresh our memories, last time what I did was I went to, this is my local site. I went to tools. I know it wasn't. I went to appearance. I went to create block theme. And I exported all the edits I had made on my local site as a child theme of 2023. So then I entered some information here. I generated the child theme. I downloaded that to my computer. And that's what I'm going to upload again over here. So it's actually still here. So I'm going to delete this once. <clears throat> um, so I'll delete that. All right. So at the moment, my live site is using the 2022 theme. And um, we installed the 2023, and then I'm going to upload the original theme I made last time, <clears throat> upload theme. So Ben's original 2023, I'm going to install. And installing it didn't break it. So we installed it, okay. And it was when I activated it that the site crashed. So let's try this again. <clears throat> Activate, and this is what we got last time. So there has been a critical error on this website. 
please check your site admin email inbox for instructions. And if I come over to my live site and refresh that, um, you'll see a critical error has broken the site. So um, when this happens, I've learned um, to look at the PHP errors of a website. So when there's a critical error on a site, the PHP errors usually give you a hint as to what has gone wrong. Um, and the way to view your PHP errors um, is to, first of all, log in to your server. So this is my website. This is the WordPress admin of my website. I want to log into the actual server because that is usually where you'll find the PHP errors. So my site is hosted, whoops, my site is hosted on Pressable. Pressable, here we go. So pressable.com. Um, and um, so there are heaps of um, hosts out there. So I'll just share the link in the Zoom chat here, but this is what I use. And then let's see, so I want to get to my admin. So I'll log into my Pressable account. We do that and log in, authentication code. All right, I'm here. And you'll see I have three sites. I have um, two test sites. And then this is my real site, the bsuns.blog. So um, this screen you're seeing right now, this is going to be different for each host. Each host has their own um, backend display. So this is what Pressable looks like. But most, ho most hosts should have similar features. Um, so for Pressable, let's see. So I just clicked into my site details. And um, let's see. Okay, so Pressable has a logs. I think this is where I went to logs. There we go. Um, so I went to my server under logs. Um, my Pressable automatically logs PHP logs for me. And so I had a look at the most recent error and you can see this was logged at um, zero o'clock, 15 minutes and four seconds. So that's um, just about when I broke this site here and you'll see the error here, PHP pass error, syntax error, unexpected identifier S expecting bracket in this particular location on line 18. Now, if you're not a developer, that's a lot of gibberish. So I'm going to try and break this down and um, explain what is the most important part of this error. So um, before we dive into it, I know a bit of programming, but I'm not a developer. So I know enough to get myself into trouble most of the time. Um, and this time I was able to get myself out. Um, so that was lucky. But anyway, so we know there's a PHP error. Um, and we'll skip all this for the moment. And the important part is this here. So um, this is a location of where the error occurred. Um, so this is a file system. So under the a SRV folder, under htdocs, under wp-content, under themes, under Ben's original 2023, under patterns, under home.php, on line 18 is where the error occurred. Um, so I'm not really sure what all this top stuff is, but you'll see the error occurred in themes, Ben's original 2023. So we activated my theme and the site broke and the error confirms that the error has indeed occurred in my original theme. Um, and in fact, it's happened in the patterns folder under home.php. So this means the error occurred in the home page template of my original theme. So something on my home page template broke the site. Um, and it happened on line 18. So what we now need to do is open this file and check line 18. Now, there are a few ways to do that. Um, the first one is um, sometimes your host will let you open the file directly. 
Um, and uh, let's see. Where would it be? PHP mine? No, not that. Hmm. Sometimes it lets you open the file system right from um, your server here. Advanced. Nope. Log. Focus dashboards. No. Hmm. Oh, anyway, the other the other way you can do it is um, what I did was I connected to my site um, with FTP or SFTP. So FTP is called a file transfer protocol. Um, and at the moment, you can see I'm communicating with my site over my browser. But if you, if you use FTP, you don't go through the browser and you sort of directly communicate with the server, um, giving and receiving um, files. So for FTP, there are a few different softwares out there you can use. I use a software called Transmit. So let me bring that over here. Um, and you see, I, I already have a connection set up here, BSUN's blog. Um, so I will connect. Um, you'll find the SFTP login credentials in your hosts settings. So let's see, you can see here, SFTP. Um, Pressable tells me what my SFTP login credentials are. So I've gone ahead and entered that into my SFTP software. And um, on the right-hand side, I've now connected to the server directly. And on the left-hand side, let's see, I'll just um, open my desktop. So on the left is my computer desktop. On the right is my server. And what I want to do is I want to find the file the error is in. So. Coming back over here, we know the error occurred in this location. So let me bring this over here. Um, so you'll see um, FTP doesn't always connect you to the very top folder. It sometimes connects you somewhere down. Um, and you'll see I've connected to htdocs. So not SRV, but htdocs. So we're starting from htdocs. So htdocs there should be a folder called wp-content. And you see here, there's a wp-content. So I'll open that up. Um, and it takes a moment to load because it's connecting with the server and getting the information. And next we want to go into themes. So I'll open themes. And then next we want to go to Ben's original 2023. So we come to themes, we come to Ben's original 2023. I'll open that up. Then we come to patterns. So I open patterns. And then the error is in home.php. So the error is in this, this file. So we've identified the file and now we want to open the file and look at line 18. So what I'm gonna do is with FTP, um, I can't actually open it on the server. So by double clicking that, this is going to bring the home h home.php to my desktop. So I've copied this file over here to my desktop and I am going to um, make a copy of this. So duplicate, home copy. Um, and the reason why I duplicated it is because I'm about to edit the home.php and then put that file back on the server. Um, and when I do that, I don't want to create new errors. And so I always want to have a backup, a copy, that I, so that I can come back to this point in time um, and redo something in case I mess up. So home.php, I've created a copy. So now I'm going to edit home.php. And to edit the PHP file, you need a text editor. And again, there are a number of text editors out there. Um, so I'm going to use one called brackets. So um, you can use a text editor of your choice. Um, and what I'm going to do, hmm, um, you see some of my old files open there, but on my desktop, um, I have home PHP. Oops. So I'm going to open that 
in the text editor. <clears throat> there we go. Um, and so you'll see I've got the home.php from the desktop open in my text editor. And next, we're going to look at line 18 and see what the problem is. But let me pause there for a moment. Um, I hope I haven't lost anyone. Have you all been able to follow along and understand what I'm doing here? Laura, yes. <clears throat> yep, that was good. Yep. All right. So um, now we know. So we've opened the file in, in, that has the problem. And then we look at line 18. <clears throat> so you see the line numbers down on the left here and we come to line 18. So now we've identified the problem is in this particular line somewhere, all right? Now that we've got this far, can you make that screen bigger? Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Just a moment. View, does that Oh, increase font size, here we go. Okay, so. How's that? Is, is that easier to see? Good. Yep. All right. So line 18. Now, the one thing I like about brackets is you'll notice here before line 18, everything is color coded pretty nicely. And then after line 18, it all becomes orange. Um, and that is because the brackets editor understands PHP code. And so um, it colors different aspects of the PHP code into different colors here. And because something is wrong in line 18, the, the bracket software has identified there's something wrong and it gets confused and it can't color code everything correctly after that. And so this is a confirmation that the error message I saw on my server and brackets have both now agreed that something has to change on line 18 here. So um, hopefully once I make the change on line 18, everything else after this line will get correctly color coded as well. So that's a non-developer way of checking error messages. Um, a developer would probably actually look at the details here and figure out what's going on. But um, this gives me another hint that something needs to change in line 18. And then what we see, so now this is where we finally come to the actual <clears throat> um, error details. So there's a PHP pass error, syntax error, unexpected identifier S, expecting a bracket. So Again, that's all difficult, but I understand this part. It says there's an unexpected S somewhere on line 18 that is breaking all this. So let's have a look at line 18. And for me, I sort of look at the color. So, so far it seems to be color coded okay. And then we come down further. And then what I notice is that this S here is sort of where it starts to get strange. So you see the, the colors all sort of stop after here. There's an, and there's an S here. This is a very non-developer way of thinking through this, but there's an S um, and the error over here said an S is the problem. And what I notice is the S comes after an apostrophe. And there's an apostrophe here. There's another apostrophe there. And I'm starting to think it's not the S that's the problem, but it's actually the apostrophe here that is causing the issue. All right. So, um, so this is Ben's profile picture. Um, let me delete the apostrophe and see what happens. All right, and you notice when I did that, all the text after this got color coded correctly. 
Um, so that, that gives me a hint that I'm probably on the right track here. So here, if I add the apostrophe back in, that breaks, that breaks the PHP language again. And if I delete the apostrophe, it corrects that. So what I'm thinking is it's not the S itself that the problem is, but it's actually the apostrophe, the symbol here that's getting entered. Now, what is this? What is this Ben's profile picture text? Um, I don't understand all of this, but I do understand figure is the HTML code um, used for images. Um, or, and, or here we have IMG, so it's an image. And then under the image, we have ALT, which is alternate text. And so ALT equals all of this. Now that's PHP code, so I don't understand it exactly, but it seems the apostrophe inside the alternative text of one of my images on my homepage is breaking my site. All right, so putting all that together, an apostrophe in the alternate text of an image on my homepage broke my site. And that is a very weird error. Um, but I'm gonna test my um, um, theory here. So what I've done is I've deleted the apostrophe and um, so it's not correct English, but let's, let's save this file, upload the file back to my server and see if this actually does solve the problem. So um, I've removed the apostrophe, the color looks all good. It looks like a proper PHP file again. So I'm gonna save that, okay? So I just press Control S on my keyboard to save that. Um, and then we come over here um, and you'll notice the time, the date on the home.php on the left is right now. So 9.30 Japan time. Um, so that's been updated. Um, and you'll see on the right here, the home.php on the right is 9.13. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload home.php to the server. And then this timestamp here should change, letting me know that I've uploaded the file back to the server. So I'm gonna double click this. And actually that was incorrect because what it did was it added the home.php way up here when what I wanted it to do was replace this file. So actually let me delete this home.php but that's not what we wanted to do. And what I probably have to do is I probably have to click into that folder. All right, so we're in WP Content Themes, BSUN's Original 2023 Patterns, and I want to, um, I want to update this home.php. So we see that's 9.13. Let me try again. I double click that. It says an, a file with the same name already exists. So I'm gonna replace. And you'll see that change to 9.31. So that's the current time right now. And well, what that did was it just removed the apostrophe. So I removed the apostrophe on my desktop. I saved the file. I uploaded that back to the server. So hopefully my site should be fixed now. So to check that, we come over here. Let me do a refresh. And you'll see the WP admin fixed. And on the front end, I refresh that, then the site has come back. Now, the layout looks a bit broken. Hmm. The layout looks broken, but the site is back online, at least. Um, so that was a very roundabout way, but basically I identified an apostrophe in the alternative text of an image on the homepage broke my site. And um, so if I go back to my local site and go into themes, no, it's not going to editor. I may have already fixed this, but what I found was 
the alternative text was here. So it was this particular image, the apostrophe in this alternative text here, when it was exported into a child theme, but somehow the create block theme plugin didn't process that symbol correctly. And so that broke the PHP. Um, so what I then did, and hopefully I have a link. No, I don't. Okay, so what I then did um, was I went to the create block theme plugin. And if you scroll down, it says, how do I report an issue? So I opened this and it says, if you have a bug to report, please submit it to the GitHub repository as an issue. So I went to the create block theme plugin repository and um, the issue was now closed, but um, is my issue fatal Go up. error? You already passed it. It's up oh, did I? Fain. Oh, here we go, right here. Apostrophe, there we go. So I found an issue. I found an issue. Apostrophe in alternative text crashes site with a critical error. I um, wrote what information I could. And then this developer here opened a pull request. Um, so we're getting to develop this stuff here, but basically he um, updated the plugin file right here. So there was something in the plugin details that needed to be fixed. Um, he was able to fix that. Somebody confirmed the fix, the fix and they launched that. Um, and that, so that basically updated the plugin. So now what I want to do today is I've added the, alter, the apostrophe back to the alternative text here and I've saved that. And I'm going to export this child theme again. So an update was launched to the create block theme plugin. So I'm going to install that update. Um, and this is where I have my fingers crossed again because this should now work, but we'll see how it goes. So create block theme has been updated. I go to appearance, create block theme. And I'm going to create a child theme again. So the theme name is going to be B Sun's original 2023 version two. Actually, I'm gonna call that Ben. Ben's original 2023 version two. Um, this is my second attempt at exporting a child theme. Um, so then we can leave all that. I'm going to generate. That doesn't look nice. <laughs> um, what on earth is that? What on earth is that? Hmm. Let me let me try something else. Um, export. Let me try again. If I refresh this page, and let me try. So Ben. Maybe it doesn't like apostrophes here. Ben's original 2023 version two. Let me let me do this without any symbols. Let yeah, there's a um, a lot of coding that doesn't like special uh, symbols, and there's even like a list of symbols not to use in certain places. Yeah. But are you yeah. trying to make a child? Uh, are you trying to create a child theme out of a child theme? Uh, is that what I'm doing? Let me think. What, what, so I'm looking at my local site. What is my theme right now? So the theme yeah, right what, now. What do you is have activated? Yeah. So 2023 is activated. Okay. And then I should be able to just come here. Let me look, I can create a new theme, cloning the active. Let me try this. So not a child theme, but I'm going to clone 2023. So Ben. But if you clone it, won't 
you and then you get an update for 2023 wouldn't it affect your your new theme wouldn't it be better Correct. to create um, a blank theme even though it's not blank it would take over all your all your changes wouldn't it um so with the create oh, block right. theme plugin if i press create block and uh, create blank theme it will change my the current theme on my site to a blank theme so i can start fresh with all my edits Okay. But if okay. I do clone 2023, it will save all the edits I have right now as a new thing. Now, as you said, if 2023 is updated in future, I won't get those updates. But I don't want to have to deal with this great <laughs> block theme plugin issue again. So let me just see if this works. And I can always come back and re export as a child theme late, later. Then maybe like it doesn't even want numbers. 2023 generate. All right, some. Let me have a quick look to see if I know what it is. Do action hook and add an image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of my site and log back in and see if that helps. Um, so, oops, log out. Let me just close this. Let me close all that. Yeah, it might Let be a caching logo. issue too. Yeah, yeah. So, I, this, so what you're seeing right now is my local um, installation, March 2023 site redesign. So let me press WP admin. That should automatically log me in. Okay, so I'm in. Let's just check. So my theme, 2023, the site, the site looks okay. It doesn't look like there is broken anywhere. All right. Then we come to create block theme. And let me, let me try a child theme again. So then original 2023. Generate. Please, oh, please. Mm. All right, then. <laughs> well, up on the top where you kept going through, like when you were troubleshooting before, it said that line 70, there was it. Can you look at the very top yeah, yeah. where it has line 70? You're like, what's wrong there? Undefined array key in. Uh, so this error is in <clears throat> WP Contents Plugins, Create Block Theme Plugin, Admin, Create Theme, ThemeStyles.php on line 70. So this error is now inside the plugin itself. It's in the, in the, in the Create Block Theme Plugins. And then... But this one. Great. Hey Ben, I just used the plugin on my on my end in local, and I was able to get a a, a zip file of it with no errors popping up. All right. So, how about okay? Let me uninstall, create block theme, and um, like uninstall the plugin and install it fresh, and see if that helps. So I'm going to deactivate, create block theme. I'm going to delete. Yes. Because I haven't actually used that plugin on my site yet. Um, I've just been editing the 2023 um, theme as is. So I refresh my site and that still looks okay. So again, yeah, I tried to use the uh, create block theme when it first came out, and I got one of those critical error pages. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay. I'm just going to let it uh, sit here and get tested out a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So update to six. So the WordPress version can actually be updated as well. I might do that. 
Yeah, because um, there was that bug and security mm. issue over the weekend. Yeah. That right, they updated so for. So I've updated the WordPress version. Um, so based on that, let me reinstall the plugin to see if that helps. So just checking the site still looks fine. So we come to plugins. We come to add new. And we go to create lock theme. I'm going to install that. I'm going to activate. All right, so that's been installed. We go to appearance. We go to create block theme. Um, let me try again. So bins 2023 child generate please work please work please work oh dear that's so weird <laughs> well well i am going to try something else when i first migrated the site from the server to my local site I used only one WordPress migration. Why don't I try using that again to upload the site from my local site to the server? So I'm not sure why the Create Block Theme plugin isn't working. Um, I don't actually want to start editing with the plugin itself um, because I think Laura, you said it was working on your computer. So I have yeah. a feeling there's something in my local setup that's breaking it. So for the sake yeah. of this live stream, let me let me upload my site some other way. So, um, because this layout is broken, isn't it? Like the header in that yeah. isn't coming through. So, yeah, something's off. So, all right. So we've we've switched tactics, and we're going to use only one WordPress migration. So, I'm going to export my site as a file to my local computer. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with the plugin, um, have a look at part one of the series and you'll see me introduce the plugin and how I use it to download the site from the server to my computer. So I'm going to download um, this. So I have this on my computer here. And this basically just made a, a complete copy of my local site. And if I upload that file to the server, I should be able to just migrate the site that way. Um, so I'm going to import and maximum upload size is two gigawatts. I think that works. So I'm going to drag and drop the local file here. Let's hope this doesn't take too long. We're almost there. The site is almost imported. Um, so yeah, this is this just sort of refreshing a bit, uh, recapping a bit. This is part five of my informal live stream. Um, so if you're watching the recording, do check out the other parts as well. And this is this will be the final part of this particular live stream. So hopefully, with um, only one WordPress migration, I'll be able to migrate my site back, update the theme, and um, complete everything. Um, but um, the uh, training team, the WordPress training team, host um, online workshops like this um, multiple times a week, actually. Um, so if um, you have spare time or if you want to learn more about WordPress, do check out the Learn WordPress Online Workshops meetup group. Um, I'll share that link in the Zoom chat here. Um, so if you click on events, I think there's a calendar view. Let's see, so we're at the bottom of May. The times you're seeing are Japan time because I'm in Japan. Um, so if you open up this calendar um, on your computer, you'll be able to see the times in your time zone. Um, but yeah, we have a few, we have another workshop tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is- um, The anniversary. The 20th anniversary, yeah, of WordPress. Yeah, because it's on Saturday, so. 
yeah, so that's happening. Let me have a few more next week. And then have I booked my June ones yet? We have create a four page WordPress website. How to translate content for learn.wordpress.org. So this is one I'm hosting next month. Um, this workshop is hosted in English um, and the learn.wordpress.org website <clears throat> um, hosts like hundreds of other content in English as well. And um, the training team, the WordPress training team has started to translate this content into other languages. So I'll be running a session next month um, for translators about how they can translate the content into their own language. Um, and then I will actually be hosting a Japanese workshop here as well, all about WordPress caching. So yeah, I'll be speaking a couple more times next year, uh, next month. All right, <clears throat> so coming back to my site, the upload has completed and uh, with only one WordPress migration, you'll always get this message here. So this isn't a problem. Um, it actually means the upload was um, successful. So it says the import process will overwrite your website, including the database, media, plugins, and things. Please ensure that you have a backup of your data before proceeding to the next step. So what I did before this step was I uploaded the file to the server, and now the only one WordPress migration plugin is about to sort of open that file up, replace all the files on the server, and it's giving me a final confirmation. Are you ready to proceed? And it says, make sure you have a backup of your data before proceeding. And uh, with Pressable, my host, I have daily backups. So I know I'm safe, um, but if you are using this on your own site, do make sure you have a backup because sometimes just site migration, a lot of different things can go wrong. So um, make sure you have a backup before you proceed. So I'm all set. I'm gonna click proceed and hopefully, hopefully <laughs> this will work. <laughs> This is, this is the same place last time where I was like, this should be done. And then it, it, it wasn't successful. All right, your site has been imported successfully. Um, save permalink structure and optionally review um, the plugin. So save permalink structure. I'm pretty sure you have to do this each time. So you don't actually have to change anything. All you have to do is come here and press save changes Permanent structure updated. All right, so now come here, refresh. Yay. All right, all right, that's looking pretty good. Oh, the foot has changed. So I'll just check, I'll come over here. Let's see, come to appearance themes. What theme is this using right now? It's using the 2023 theme. And if you go to the editor, and click on templates. Um, click on manage all templates. You'll see the home has three dots here and you clear customization. So it's pulled all the customizations from my local site into my live site and my live site now uses the 2023 um, theme. So success, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that, that took five sessions, so five hours, um, but I took my site, changed the theme from 2022 to 2023, but kept the look the same. And um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> awesome. Um, thank you so much um, for coming today. And for those who have been to all five sessions, thank you for coming. Um, I think we're a few minutes early, but I think that's a really good place to, to stop. I don't want to touch anything else and break anything more. So um, Thanks. thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Yep. And I'll see you all again on another online workshop soon. All right. That'll bye. be great. Do another one. This was fun. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. All right, then. Bye.